the keyhole garden is doing just great. Got a little bit of rain last night. So things are greening up and hopefully going to grow like crazy today. These red bushes here are peonies coming up. I'm not sure that this will be their forever home, but for now they're here so they get to stay for a little bit. This is my gigantic hole for my clothesline post. I have to fill that in. We have rhubarb coming up back here. I have asparagus that is going to be coming all along this whole side. And then I transplanted some rhubarb that I probably won't harvest this year, but we'll be able to harvest next year all along this edge so that hopefully I can sit or crouch out here and pick over the wall without having to walk in there. The greenhouse is coming along really well, um, getting fuller and fuller in there. My sink in place, Scott's gonna work on my potting bench. It's on the project list. He's dragging his feet on that one. I don't know why, but sometimes that happens on projects he doesn't like. <laughs> Gavin gave me a stepping stone for my front door, which is a chunk of the old sidewalk that we'll be pulling out. It may not live there forever, but for now, it's serving a good purpose and hopefully helping us from developing a mud pit right in front of my door. We've got our plant starts out here looking so good. So this is from one of my current starts. All right, obviously that's happy. By the way, currants are super easy to propagate. I definitely will be doing this again from cuttings. Um, we have got our willow cuttings, and you can see in here all these red roots mean they're forming new roots and going to be ready to go in the ground very soon. I've seen some green starting on my mulberries, which is I'm very, very pleased to see. So, for example, this is a black mulberry, and you can see, or maybe not, I will show you the most microscopic little leaves. There is a tiny green bud right down here at the base. Oop, and a couple more that are green up here at the top. They're teensy, but at least there's something green on it. I've been staring at dead sticks for weeks now, so that is promising. All right, I have got hardy kiwi cuttings ready to go in the ground. These are some that I ordered from somebody off of eBay. That's a cost-effective way to get cuttings. Um, maybe not as reliable as getting them from a nursery. You're not getting a warranty. You're not, I mean, you're hoping that the person is really selling you what they're telling you, but it's obviously not as professional. But it's way, way cheaper than having to go through a nursery sometimes. So I take my chances. Um, these were some grapevine cuttings that I did. So I experimented. I got a bunch of dormant wood and I got one that was a little less dormant looking. And look, at he's the only one surviving. So, um, excited to see how that goes. And I need to find out what variety this is and whether this is like a self-fertile one or if it needs another grape to pollinate with. Um, but anyway, I've got green, so I'm excited for now. Let's see, tomatoes are looking excellent. We are now past that frost date, hopefully past our last frost, so we can get them in the ground. Um, oh, here is another mulberry, also black. My black mulberries are doing just a little better than my red ones. Lots of green on that one. I've got a whole box of cuttings to get planted today. Um, over here we've got our elderberry cuttings that I ordered from somebody off of Facebook Marketplace in Wisconsin. So they're, they're going to be... Uh, acclimated to this type of weather. Look at all the roots on these guys. They need to get in the ground, but I had to wait till that last frost date. So they can go in the ground any time now. We are going to be planting, planting, planting. How about these guys? Check this out. Look at all those leaves. There's hardly a stick in here that doesn't have some type of activity going on. I have full-fledged leaves over here. So the ones that seem to do better, and I'm going to remember this for next year, are the pieces of wood that were greener, less brown. Not that the brown ones won't do anything, but they are certainly having less activity or slower activity than what my green ones were having. So I think this was such a smart way to do it. To pot all of these in this cake pan style took maybe 20 minutes. If I was going to put each one in an individual pot, I would have had to order all those pots, and it would have taken a lot of time, and who knows if it would have even if they would have even worked. So I feel like this is good. I'm hoping that I'll be able to transplant them out of here very soon into their own respective pots. 
This was kind of a cool experiment. I left this guy out when it got down to freezing outside. I left three mulberries out here. I brought everybody else back in. And we still have green on these. So that might be that it doesn't get as cold in my greenhouse as it does outside, or maybe that black mulberries do okay with a little bit of freeze. I don't know what that means, but interesting nonetheless. All right, as for my calving check today, I have the newborn nursery ward over here. These two mamas, along with their two beautiful little babes, have settled in on this side of the pasture, it seems, for the last couple of days. So you'll see two mamas standing up and then one baby standing next to her mom on the left. And then on the right, you can see there is, on the right, you can see there's one little black dot behind, standing behind that mama. That is her baby standing there. I checked on our newest mother this morning. She is all the way on the opposite side of the pasture. She has tucked her baby on the opposite side of the pasture fence for safekeeping, but it seems like everybody is over her new baby and leaving her alone now, so she is much more calm. I have a whole group of cows settling on the south side of the barn this morning. I see Royal, I see Pudge, both laying down. Royal does not look like she is in labor or doing anything exciting. So what I'm looking for today is any cow off on their own. That would indicate that they might be in labor or interested in doing that. And I do not see any of that going on. So far, this year for calving, they've all done it right before a storm rolls in. <laughs> really don't appreciate that, but you know, I don't get to choose. Piggies are happy over there on green grass, loving their new pasture. I see they've destroyed their waterer. That's typical pig behavior. So this is the broiler house in full effect, working exactly how we want it to. These guys get to be out here on green grass and pasture. They get the wind blowing past them. They get sunshine. They get bugs and all kinds of things to supplement their diet other than the food that we're feeding them. They've got shelter from the rain. It's lightweight, it's movable. They've got a wind guard. This stripey thing right here, which we move depending on which direction the wind is coming out of. But they seem like they're just thriving and doing excellent. And you know, they look really happy. So I'm happy. Regan, who's in that cage behind you? Meat birds. What are we going to do with those meat birds? Eat them. Are you going to help eat them? Learning how to drive a stick shift on a hill. Good practice. I love these flowers down here. Can I pick some of these? You guys are doing a very nice job. Thank you. We cleaned out the brooder and now we have all of this nitrogen rich bedding. And we are now spreading it in the permaculture orchard. So as we've talked about before, we plant our trees in rows, but lots of different kinds of trees intermingled with different perennials and smaller bushes and they all go in these rows so we are spreading this bedding along these rows and then there will be a plastic mulch layer on the top so this bedding will help suppress weeds and it will help deliver nitrogen to these plants which is what they need to feed themselves Mom. what Regan? oh my goodness there was an egg shell in there that was probably from the ceramas they probably buried their egg all right, you can put it back in the pile. We'll return it to the earth. Who needs driver's ed when you've got a farm and a farm dog truck? Jeez, I know we hired a lawnmower. That's good, that's good, Tommy. Yeah. Okay, ready? Yep. Ouch. 
They've got the brooder all cleaned out, all the way down, probably was a foot of bedding in there. And they've got this first bay bedded back down and ready for my broody cochin that's going to sit on the cerama eggs, hopefully. Scott also worked really hard to build me storage for my Premier One net fences. They can be crazy to store. So now we've got three different bins, one for sheep fence, one for pig fence, one for chicken fence, and also some extra storage for the poles, additional support poles, and maybe small pieces of fencing. So on our mission to be organized, we are getting there. The oat bin will get better and better every time we're in here. Looks like all three new moms and new calves are hanging out on the south side of the pasture today. Very, very cute. This mama is still here. She was here this morning. Now I'm getting worried about her. I want to see her get up. Take a look at her backside. Alright, these are the two I think that are going to go next. On our right we have the five teeter. When you have beef cows and they don't have number tags, you have little identifiers to tell them apart. On the left we have Snow White. She has a white udder. They've both bagged up pretty nicely. And both had some mucus and stuff yesterday. This little calf is getting yelled at for going too far. Reagan, what do you have? Show me. What is it? Asparagus. Asparagus. Say asparagus. I'm gonna put these here. Perfect. You're gonna try to find some more. So when you tiptoe, on the ground, will grow. No, it won't grow. But a chicken will eat it. But when you pick asparagus, you have to be very, very careful, okay? We don't want to step on any other asparagus plants that are coming up. Oh, they will die. Well, and you see how this one is snapped off kind of high? When you snap them up, you want to snap them off way down at the ground, like this. That's right, you know you're safe in the keyhole. Regan, let me see. That looks beautiful. And All right. I think, though, Regan, that we've got all the asparagus, so can you take this and put it on the kitchen counter? Fuck you, that cap. There's no more that we're going to pick. The other ones are too little yet. Good, I spied some. Really good, you spied some. All right, tell me what it is again. What is it? Spaghetti. <laughs> Spaghetti? It's asparagus, Regan. <laughs> Asparagus. Those plants are called peonies. Wilder, show me what you're building. A tractor? Is it going to be your digger? And it's like five on the back. Oh. Yeah. It was correct. Wow. Good thing you have Tommy to help put it together. I need this. And fine. Oh, you think that that's where the scoop goes? I think you're right, Wilder. We have a little bit of daylight left, so we're going to get a couple more projects done. Scott is going to start my potting bench. And Tommy is going to put together Wilder's digger. Regan picked the asparagus for us. I am going to check the ceramic coop and see if there's any eggs. Because I think that tonight... Spaghetti! Not spaghetti, asparagus. I think tonight I'm going to take Broody Judy, our Broody Cochin Hen, and put her in the brooder with her eggs. We'll see if she sits or not. Wait, let me see if I can reach him from here. Like, 
Asparagus. It's spaghetti. Well, we have to be very careful because we're going to hatch these. <gasps> are they what color of chicks? What color of chicks? The same color these guys are. So I have got two more Cerama eggs to add to my clutch, and I will be putting those in today. Hey, Tallulah. Um, she's not laying them in the nest box, and I think part of the problem is because of the cold temperatures that we had been having, because of the cold temperatures, we put hay in the bottom of this chickshaw, and there's also hay in the nest boxes. If we only had hay in the nest boxes and not in the bottom of the chickshaw, I think that would be much more encouraging for her to jump up in that nest box. So I should probably clean that out maybe tomorrow and uh, see if I can encourage her to lay in the correct spot. You're so good at it. it is Show me how you dig. Yeah, let me make it easier. Well, I'll try to dig now. It will be easier. Wow. You're just like Papa. Well, I'll dig right here. It'll be easier. Dig right here. Dig right here on this spot. Yeah. Wow, Wilder! Now? Alright, we are down in the barn, which is all cleaned out. It looks so lonely in here. <laughs> Just a couple of Rhode Island Reds hanging out for the night. But we are on a mission. We are going to come get Broody Judy and see if we can move her to the oat bin, to the brooder I've set up for her. I suspect she's in here somewhere. Some chickens are really nice all the time and other chickens get fairly testy when you try to get them out of their nest box if they're broody. Who are you? You're my black hen girl. All right, time to come up. Come on. I know you're growling at me, I hear you. Come on, let's go. You're a little bit difficult to get out of here. You're a good girl though. Listen. We're going to give you some eggs, though. Please don't be upset. Please don't be upset. You're going to get to sit on eggs. This is Miss Broody Judy. She's a coachin'. She's got these beautiful, long, pajama-footed legs. And um, coachins are known for being really sweet chickens and for being fairly broody. So that's exactly what she's done. When we say a chicken is broody, what we mean is they're not like the rest of the flock out here picking around all day long, going in once to lay an egg, and then coming back out. A broody hen will sit. She'll sit in the nest box, she'll lay her own eggs, she'll sit on other chickens' eggs, but she wants to hatch babies. She's got baby fever. And it's very difficult to break a chicken's brood. Um, breaking a brood means convincing them to stop sitting in there. It's not healthy for them to sit and be broody, especially if it's kind of without purpose, which is what's been going on for the last week here. Um, even though she's been broody, we've been collecting all the eggs every day. So it's like, she's really accomplishing nothing. Um, but it's not as good for them because they lose a little bit of condition, they can lose some feathers. They, um, much like any pregnancy, they sort of wear their bodies out. They only come out typically once a day to eat, go to the bathroom, and then it's back in to keep sitting on eggs. Um, and there's sort of like a component to it. I don't know if you would call it chemical or not, but um, a broody chicken is keeps her brood because she keeps her chest warm. 
So in Florida, when I would get a broody chicken, I would take water bottles and freeze them and put them in the nest box. That encouraged chickens to get in, lay their egg, and get out, and their chest never heated up. So they never felt like they were sitting on a bunch of warm eggs. Once a chicken is sitting on a pile of warm eggs and her chest heats up, um, that stimulates more of the urge to sit there and try to hatch out those eggs. So we want to give our girl a purpose here. I've been fighting with my incubators for the last couple of weeks, having some trouble holding temperature. And um, this is, how, what do they say in permaculture? The problem is the solution. All right, the problem is I have a broken incubator and I have a broody hen with no eggs to sit on. But that's really the solution because I have eggs that need to be sat on and I have someone desperate to sit on those eggs. So we're gonna give her a try. We'll see if she'll keep her brood um, with any luck. I've got seven ceramic eggs for her to try to sit on. So let's take her in and see what she thinks of her new living quarters. All right, say goodbye to your sister. Say, I'll see you on the other side. All right, here we go. What do you think, Mama? This is home sweet home for the next 19 days. You think you can do it? Ceramic eggs only take 19 days to hatch, so we'll see. All right, let's put her in. We've got this section all ready for her. She's got food and water and grit and some greens, and most importantly, a pile of eggs. Here you go, Mama. Tell me what you think. You got your eggs you can sit on. Got green grass. Got water. She's thinking about how can I get back out to my nest box. <laughs> Let's put your lid down. See if you get a little more interested in those eggs. Because I can't have you leaving, my friend. So while Broody Judy is busy checking her new digs out, we're going to go check the cows real quick, and then we'll come back and see how she's doing. Scott is working on our potting bench tonight. He's in the process of screwing down these deck boards and adding a few more deck boards to the bottom for the shelf. Tallulah approves. She is the official greenhouse cat now. She loves to go in there. We suggested that Scott added a cat door to the greenhouse, but he refuses to right now. But I love it. It matches my greenhouse sink perfectly. So much better than what I had in place before. So I think I'm gonna love it. All right. The meatballs had an excellent day. Sure, they all gained weight. They're looking fantastic. I'm going to go in there and pull all their feeders out. Um, broilers or meat birds should not be eating 24 hours a day. A um, couple of reasons we don't want ours to be eating. Number one, I need them hungry to be able to move them. And number two, if they eat 24 hours a day or have access to food 24 hours a day, they will eat 24 hours a day. And that is not good for their legs, that's not good for their heart. They need to slow down their growth rates just a little bit. So that 12 hours on, 12 hours off seems to be a good combination for them. Thank you. Oh, I'm so